Sleeping in space is tough, but developing an addiction to sleep aids? That would be bad in space too. Howdy friends, Trace here again for D News. Sleeping in space is difficulty level advanced. The ISS is constantly humming with the noise of condensers and fans, air filters and other equipment. The sun rises and sets every 90 minutes as the football field sized craft falls around the planet causing weightlessness and there is no up or down so lying on a comfy mattress is definitely out. There's not even a 24 hour alarm clock to set an alarm to. Astronauts can be on the ISS for weeks or months and some crew members don masks or earplugs to help them get 40 winks. Eventually, most learn to tune out all of these distractions, but many astronauts resort to taking sleeping pills to get through their missions. New research in Lancet Neurology studied sleep deprivation in 85 astronauts on the ISS and space shuttle. They found, in flight, Earth's explorers don't get too much beauty sleep on their own and instead are popping all sorts of Z drugs to catch some shut-eye. As you might recall from an older D News piece, sleeping pills don't actually help you sleep as much as they sedate you, which can cause all sorts of mental compromises and physical effects. Space sleep meds have been provided to astronauts since the Mercury missions in the early 1960s. Being launched into a completely alien, high-stress environment does have some negative effects on our sleep cycle. Not surprised. Mission Control provides eight and a half hours a day for every astronaut to sleep, but according to the Canadian Space Agency, most are only able to get about a six-hour siesta. Astronauts can sleep in any module, provided that they're tied to the wall, because we don't want sleeping astronauts just floating around. Crew on the ISS use sleeping bags and some of the pics get a little weird, but the Lancet Neurology says that they are taking pills 73% of the nights studied, and that is no laughing matter. The pills they're taking are reportedly prescribed to treat insomnia and anxiety, or even brain disorders and muscle tension. On the ground, users of these hypnotic drugs have experienced amnesia and anxiety, even behaviors like sleep driving. Most astronauts say that they take medications because of the distractions discovered comfort with weightlessness, or simply that it's too warm or cold. But a drowsy astronaut can also self-medicate with caffeine, which introduces a cycle of uppers and downers, as caffeine has a half-life of three to seven hours. This can cause more problems with the sleep schedule and the need to pop a sleep aid only a few hours later, which is not so great. Of course, chronic sleep deprivation isn't really great either. It can cause false memory formation, increased stress, decreased alertness, risk of mistakes, injury, and long-term health problems like high blood pressure, stroke, obesity, heart failure, depression. It's a mission priority to keep astronauts healthy and safe. So the drugs they're taking and their vital signs are being monitored. These humans are living on the edge and studies like these reveal the heavy toll it can take on the human body. As NASA plans for a long duration mission to Mars, they're highly focused on making the experience safe for the body and for the mind. And that includes learning how astronauts throw slumber parties. How would you solve this problem? More pills? More on the ground sleep training? More free time to nap or doze? What do you think? We've got that empty box down below, so get down there and fill it up with your thoughts. Thanks for watching D News. If you want to suggest more stuff that we can cover, tweet at me, at Trace Dominguez, or you can also tweet at D News.